Okay, you're all set to go. Thank you. Uh, welcome to a meeting of the Town of Barstable Comprehensive Financial Advisory Committee. Today is May 8th, 2021. This meeting is being recorded by the Town of Barnstable and will be broadcast on Channel 2018 after the meeting has concluded. Uh, the agenda is on the Town website. So we are officially uh, opening our <clears throat> meeting. Chuck, will you? I will. Wendy? I saw Wendy in the waiting room. Oops. Nope, I'm not, I'm not muted. I think Lillian's muted. I'll start with you. Lillian? Oops. Lillian, you're muted, but okay. <laughs> Hector? I'm here. Neil? Here. Chris? Here. Jackie? I'm not sure I saw Jackie. I don't see Jackie. Wendy, I see. Wendy, wave if you're here. There you go. <laughs> And Chuck is here, so we have a quorum. Thank you. And we have um, Betty and Paula <clears throat> joining us from the as counselors. Um, Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good. Good. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Tonight, we're going to have an update of the operating budget uh, subcommittee draft number six. And so it is. Uh, with pleasure that I turn it over to Chuck. All right, so Mark, uh, I hit the screen share button. Mark, yes. you're muted, yep. Is that correct? Hit screen share and then it'll bring up um, the open applications on your desktop, find your report and click on that one. Okay, uh, let's see. <clears throat> um, hmm. Hang on, sorry. I'm go backwards and try again. Screen share. Well, oh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try to do it this way. Uh, open. Version six. Minimize, minimize, close. Now let's try it. There it is. Can people see that? Yep. Yes. Okay, good. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask uh, so, uh, other than our two guests, um, Wendy and Hector have not been part of this. So, um, this is primarily to solicit input from either people on the committee or people on CFAC. Um, and I'll ask each of the people to go through the sections that they prepared. See if I can get over here. There we go. So cover page takes some of the things that we used to have in the body of the report and just puts it on the cover to try to chop the number of pages down a little bit. The operating budget that's highlighted in yellow, we will update with this year's link. Yeah, and one comment on both of those both of those citations on the first page, you, you, I think you want to make the links live. So just be sure to do that before you publish. Absolutely. Yep. All right. The next page, um, the only reason the word page is in yellow is um, based on final formatting. We'll make sure the pages match the section. But uh, because it's fairly lengthy, um, Neil made the suggestion we put a table of contents in. So we did that. And we will make sure that uh, before it's uh, published, the pages match whatever the actual pages are. I'm just going to keep going till people stop me. The methodology is 
updated for dates, but largely unchanged. Um, overview, same compared to past reports. We continued to use the um, impact of COVID, even though it's a couple years old on the town, because I think the belief was that um, the town's approach to budgeting, um, COVID was a great test and it, it came through with flying colors. So that's still in there. Um, there's a general high level, whoops, sorry, 50,000 feet. These are the numbers that we'll be going through in the rest of the, uh, in the rest of the report. And I think those are updated, Mark. Um, but again, I assume that somebody in your office will take a final, final, final look, <clears throat> excuse me, once we have this, um, all the comments from today's meeting. Yes. If I could just interject, what is the, the deadline for the final vote on this document by our committee? We're going to try to pass it on at our next meeting. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, at the bottom of all the pages, <clears throat> I don't have, or at least I don't have the um, technological aptitude to change the grade in header or footer at the bottom, but we will change that before the report's done. Okay. Revenue, the, uh, the revenue section is largely unchanged, again, updated for uh, FY24 numbers. <clears throat> the, the, one, the one thing that um, uh, we have to be clear about, um, the CWMP budget, is included this year in the Water Pollution Control Enterprise Fund. So last year, my recollection is we had a whole section split out for CWMP. That will not be the case this year because of the, the new way that, uh, that it's being uh, tracked and accounted for. So can I ask a question, a substantive question? What, what, what's the rationale for folding the CWMP budget? I assume operating budget and capital budget into the Water Pollution Control Enterprise Fund. Mark, maybe you can just give a little background here. Certainly, Hector. Thanks for the question. It, um, when you think about it, the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan is an expansion of our public sewer system, which is an enterprise fund, our public sewer system. So we are just you know, folding in the operating component of the CWMP and with the rest of the sewer enterprise fund budget, but it has its own unique funding source. It's not funded by rates. And so you'll, you'll see in the enterprise fund budget that there is a transfer from other funding sources, except all the costs, the operating costs um, of funding the CW for running the CWMP. So if I could just, uh, Follow up. So, what what are the primary costs on the operating side for CWMP? Is that salaries we have and several, benefits primarily? We have about uh, over. I think we have about fifteen positions that are funded, or sixteen positions that are funded that do nothing but work on the CWMP. The benefits associated with those salaries, some operating costs to support that staff, as well as the debt service costs associated with any long-term financing for sewer expansion capital projects. Okay, and then there are some number of, of town staff, perhaps Griffin Bowden would be an example, who, whose salary, whose time is largely, but not exclusively dedicated to CWMP. How, how it would Griffin's salary be handled? Griffin's, yeah, Griffin's salary is actually funded out of the other operating budgets. He's, none of his salary is charged to the CWMP. And, and that's that's the way we have it right now. Okay. There's a lot of other things other than just the CWMP. Right, obviously. And so, so again, just to sum up, the CWMP operating budget is what's being folded into the Water Pollution Control Enterprise Fund, but not any capital spending.
the capital program is part of the sewer enterprise fund as well. Oh, it is. Yes, the debt service associated with any construction bonds that we issue for CWNP projects is part of that operating budget, funded with its own unique revenue source. Um, so you'll notice on the <clears throat> sewer enterprise fund section of the budget book, you'll see the CWMP's capital program in there as well. Okay. So when you think about it, Hector, it's an activity of the sewer enterprise fund, right? They just happen yeah. to have a very large capital program within the sewer enterprise fund. Now. Right. But the presumption is that it's like any enterprise fund, it will yeah. be exclusively or almost exclusively funded out of user fees. Not the expansion, not the expansion, but see not the CWMP portion of it. That you we're not charging, we're not putting the, the cost of running the comprehensive waste water management plan on user rates. Right? Remember that? We're not that it's not built into user rates. It has its own unique funding sources that includes rooms taxes, meals taxes, sewer right. assessments, subsidies from the Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund, <clears throat> property taxes that we've committed to that program. But no general fund. Property taxes are general fund. Yes. Okay. Let's receive a general. So when you think about it, it's being subsidized by the general fund through those property tax contributions that we're using to offset the cost of implementing CWMP. Okay. You know, well, I, just as a thought, um, you know, so I've asked some questions that a knowledgeable citizen might, might ask, maybe consider, consider putting in a sentence or two of explanation as, as to why the CWMP is included in the water pollution control enterprise fund. We may all think it's obvious, but the 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 average knowledgeable taxpayer reading this report might might not fully grasp it. So just consider Chuck well, as a, you know putting in a, a, a several sentences of explanation. Well, Hector, um, the the a small explanation about the CWMP being incorporated into the water pollution control is explained in a couple of sentences under enterprise funds. Yeah, I, I agree with Hector. I think this is a huge, not a huge, but it's a large change that, that I think that um, we could start leading into on page two in the, in the table of contents where we could say water pollution control now including CWMP. And then in this section, begin to explain how that transition to the sewer enterprise fund under the water pollution control. That, that's a pretty big change, which otherwise we don't get to, it to until the end of the report. I think that there, I think there is a, on page 15, um, there is an, there's a CWMP, and there are a couple of sentences that explain why it is incorporated into the water pollution control. We can move that further to the front if you think that would be helpful. I, I think it would be helpful to have it because it's a big change and it's a lot of money and it, it's going to last for 30 years i think some explanation further up is warranted so that's my two cents well we could we could certainly think about putting it right after the general fund okay anybody else have any ideas i think that's a good idea okay well let's so Chuck, let's just uh, put it in right after the general fund and before school department. All righty. Okay. Because it. Chuck, I'll, I'll draft up a paragraph and send it to you for your review. 
That'd be awesome, Mark. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, and can I just ask, um, because there's some feedback, anybody who's not speaking, can you go on mute just so we, um, there's, there's some squeaky feedback here. Well, that worked. All right. Um, the, the last thing in this section that we will go into in detail uh, in a subsequent um, section is the comment on uh, state chapter 78 and um, its impact uh, or, or its place within the overall general fund budget. Um, so there is a substantial amount of verbiage later in the document. Uh, there was just a thought that we should at, uh, kind of in line with what Hector suggested, put something about that right up front so you don't catch it for the first time on page you know, 17. Okay. All right. So uh, general fund. Now. Is Jackie here? Ordinarily, I'd ask Jackie to do this. I'm not sure she's here. In fact, I think Neil did a lot of the work on the general fund. So yeah, I think I think Neil Neil drafted it actually. So if, if Neil would not mind taking us through this, I'll go on mute. Okay. So um, the general fund got updated for the latest numbers that Mark sent out. Um, so the the major change is in the first table where um, fiscal year. 2024 budget is 96.5, which is a little bit lower and went from 7.1% growth to 6.4. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, the text below that explains that, you know, property taxes and intergovernmental um, transfers um, make up 90% of, of the uh, increase. And then the table two general fund revenue sources is uh, updated for the uh, where it came from based upon uh, extra information that uh, Mark uh, sent to me um, that, uh, that I think now reconciles. Um, the one thing I'd like to thank Chuck and probably Mark for is um, what's not in this table is intergovernmental is now 13% of the total general fund, not 15% as was in an earlier version, which um, was not correct. So the, um, the rest of this is pretty much explaining um, the differences in that Mark uh, has kindly supplied relative to where um, the increase in property taxes comes from um, more than the proposition two and a half based upon um, the increase in the vineyard and, and such. Could I um, just ask an, an edit question? The, the table general fund revenue sources. It's the second table on that page. Why is revenue have quotation marks on it or around it or half quotation marks? I don't think I have a good reason for that. Well, I would suggest taking that out. Yeah, I, I didn't know whether that was meant to emphasize something. Okay. Good point. I'm still getting used to this municipal um, finance approach. I think um, on the page where it says not incorrect, but redundant, that is correct. That whole paragraph probably can go away because that was in the revenue section uh, earlier. The whole paragraph? Yeah, the 200, basically the, the transfer uh, from the surplus, yes. I, I don't see any need for it. it does, I'm not sure who put the yellow uh, redundant, but when I, I looked at it, it seemed that way. I did, and I, th I think the, um, the, the body of the, this 
paragraph is largely redundant. The only thing I'd ask Mark is, um, there was a comment in Mark's document about the, the $1.3 million increase in the town's certified free cash balance. And since it was in Mark's document, I think that's the only thing that makes this paragraph differ from the earlier one. And I'm interested in whether Mark thinks that that is something that um, has relevance in this report or if, if the purpose of including that is, is not necessarily germane to, you know, the operating budget report from C. So you're you're probably you're primarily having it in there because of the uh, free cash. Yeah, this part. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that I'm now highlighting in blue is the really only difference between this and the earlier thing that you referred to. So if if we don't need to make making a point about certified free cash balance is either not appropriate or not helpful then I agree completely with Neil. Let's just bag this whole paragraph and not be redundant. Well, I agree with that. And is, is Mark still with us? Yeah. Yes, Chuck, I think you can take it out. Okay. Yeah, I think so. All right. For some reason, I can only see Wendy. So. Oh, my goodness. Wendy, do I you want I gotta take my video off because I'm half asleep. I'm still on Berlin time. Okay, I'm just gonna do that. When did you get back? <laughs> All right. I think the summary looks good. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna we're gonna insert the CWMP right here before schools. I'm just going to make a note. Whoops. Okay. Okay. All right. Schools is Neil's. Um, nothing has really changed here. Uh, and as Mark said, uh, I think before the uh, meeting started, we're going to be uh, expecting uh, feedback from the school people uh, this week, and then we'll update this. And uh, unless there's any new questions from Hector or, or Wendy or anyone else. I don't have any questions, Neil. I think you've done a great job. It looks good to me. I frankly haven't had a chance to read this carefully, but um, I, I, I believe that I agree with Wendy that it's it's probably fine. If I if I have any any comments after this meeting, can I send them to somebody? Maybe to Neil or Chuck. To Chuck. Okay. You send them to me, I'll make sure the subcommittee gets them, Hector. Okay. So I will keep paging down, not to fast forward, but, but I will keep paging down <clears throat> until we get to the next section. Okay. DPW, that's Chris. Yeah, so DPW, I mean, none of this has changed since our last subcommittee meeting, but uh, just to review it for the other members, um, you know, modest increases in the different budgets for personal and operating expenses year over year, capital outlay remained the same. Um, the primary concern for the department is personnel. There's a lot of open positions that they're not able to fill. Um, and the department has been trying various things to improve that situation as far as on the job training for qualified applicants, um, but they're limited as far as what they can offer for salaries. I think that's really one of the largest challenges that they're having. Um, followed obviously by inflationary costs, which everybody's facing. So, unless the, anyone. The, go the ahead. limits, the limits, Chris, on. On salaries, um, they have 
there's a salary schedule according to seniority and they have to stick within those those salary bands is that is that uh, the well they have the existing limits? collective bargaining agreements that they have to follow there's not much leeway for what they can offer to new hires outside of that um so it would, it would require renegotiation with the unions was my understanding to offer higher salaries so they're not able to compete with the salaries that are offered by private companies right so how do how does dpw attract people then well that's the big question right now it seems like they're having trouble with that um so there's ongoing discussions about how they can try to address that and that would necessarily involve the union well it could involve renegotiation of those things certainly um, right and obviously general economic conditions complicate it because nobody can find help anywhere but if dpw can't offer competitive salaries obviously they're not going to get any new hires how many open positions are there 20 is it says 25 there were 25 as of the time i wrote that on the town website and those range from lower end things, which are still important, you know, laborers and custodians all the way up right. to highly skilled positions. Right. And all of those are union union jobs. Um, I believe so, as far as I know. Yeah, Hector, if I could, or uh, Chris, sorry, uh, this is Eddie speaking. If I yes. could interject something and perhaps Paula could jump in. There was a discussion at the town council meeting because this came up because we had two agenda items, one from uh, Chief Sonnabend and one from uh, Director Sant Santos um, coming up with projects that could be done with all the savings from the salaries that weren't spent. And it generated the same questioning that I'm hearing you guys doing here, like, my goodness, what's going on? And Mark L ste stepped up and Mark Milne, maybe you can talk about this too. Um, that they're going to be looking at things like the percentage of health care payments and things like that. Uh, is there some sort of a deep dive going on, Mark? I just, uh, you know, that would help. Um, in fact, I saw Mark Els the other day and I mentioned to him, perhaps you could get the Financial Advisory Committee to help you in this look uh, across this entire spectrum to see what is the art of the possible for making uh, employment at the town of Barnstable more attractive. And uh, Director Santos was saying a lot of his openings are in those those summer jobs, which are, are just so important that are going unfilled. So I don't know, Paula, Mark Milne, if you want to jump in, you, you may know more than I do. I'm just basing it on what I heard at the town council meeting. Thank you. Well, just to add on to what Betty said, uh, Councilor Ludke, uh, the benefits, the health benefits in the town of Barnstable are probably the least competitive around. You know, they're, we pay only 50% of the health care premium. But the challenge is, uh, as Chris was pointing out, you know, everything is kind of wrapped up in collective bargaining as well. So, you, you know, you move one thing, you got to maybe move another. But I think there's a commitment, uh, and, and this is where Mark Mill can add, add in uh, for senior staff to really start looking at this because you know we don't want to be in a personnel crisis just when we need to be ramping up these very important positions in town. Yes, thank you. Um, we are in the middle um, of collective bargaining agreements, uh, negotiations. Um, I don't want to um, get into details and negotiations in this call it's not appropriate um to talk about uh what's going on but um things that we could look at as a then which other communities are looking at as well um are things like you know in order to attract more candidates uh to positions here can we offer the opportunity for remote work um, because, you know, housing is an issue. Relocation is an issue. Um, can you, do you have certain types of jobs in your organization that offer the opportunity for more hybrid type of work or remote work? 
um, so that somebody doesn't have to worry about relocating. Um, we are, as Councillor Schnepp mentioned, a health insurance uh, contribution of 50-50, which is the minimum by state law. We're actually closer to 60-40 because we offer premium holidays that are already in negotiated union contracts. Um, those premium holidays bring our contribution, health insurance contribution rate closer to 60%. Um, still, um, it probably not as uh, generous as what we see in some of the neighboring communities on Cape Cod. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a deal breaker for somebody because you also have to look at the salaries that we pay compared to our competition, which are the other uh, cities and towns nearby. Um, maybe, you know, we, we may not be as competitive on the health insurance, but how are our salaries uh, compared to those other communities? Uh, maybe we pay a little bit more in salary, which makes up that difference and then some. But you have to look at it, you know, really on a position by position basis. Other things that, you know, communities have uh, looked at doing are things like sign on bonuses, relocation assistance and things like that. So. Um, we do recognize that this is a cyclical issue. Um, I think we can all agree that, um, you know, what we're going through right now is, is not typical. And we'll probably, you know, there are, there are periods of time where people are trying to get into the town, desperately trying to get into working for a local community mm -hmm. um, because there is no opportunities in the private sector. Uh, we're all that's available out there. Um, and it will turn around eventually, but it's hard to predict when. Um, so we don't, you, you gotta be careful about how you do go forward um, in establishing a compensation and benefit package that you lock yourself into forever. And then all of a sudden something turns around and you're potentially way over market. Um, so you have to be aware of those situations as well, but it's challenging. It really is challenging right now. And you, you see it no matter where you are, whether in the private sector or the public sector, we're all facing the difficulty right now of trying to find good people. And the private sector offers a lot more flexibility um, in doing so because they can go and just modify a salary and benefit for a particular individual because they're not typically unionized. When you're in a unionized environment, you can't do that. Everything right. has to be negotiated. When when was the union um, the contract signed, Mark? And what is the duration of that contract? Our collective bargaining agreements are typically three years um, in length. Um, they all expire. All the many of them expire this June thirtieth. I believe most of the school collective bargaining agreements expired June 30th, 2024. Uh, so we're either in the last year or the second to last year of all of our labor negotiations. Okay. All labor okay. Negotiations. Sorry, Paul, uh, Councillor Snip had something oh, to ask. No, no well, just two thoughts. I mean, when you're comparing private versus public, one of the benefits uh, that I think sometimes people don't promote enough is the pension system. I mean, if people want long-term security, uh, a public pension is a really good selling point. Now, in in, con in compa comparing between different public entities, we're all working with the same pension system, so that doesn't give us a competitive edge, but between private and public, it might be a little bit for some, from some individuals. The other thought, um, you know, Councilor Ledke had said that, you know, it's seasonal employment, is a real challenge. And I think that it might behoove us to look at some housing models like the AmeriCorps program has, where we actually, the town actually provides housing, uh, you know, congregate type model um, for seasonal workers. Cause it would be, you know, right now, I think a lot of people are that who are able to work seasonally have to live with family, you know, which is fine, but you know, your, your pool of individuals is much more limited because of that. Okay, well, thank you for all those comments about the about the union situation. Chris, I'm sorry to interrupt there. No, I know. I think those were all good points that everyone brought up. It's very challenging issue and there's no real good solution. So everybody's working hard on it, though, it sounds like. Yep. 
So I think that sums up DPW, unless anyone has any other comments or questions. Okay, moving on to police then. Moving to police. All right, so police again, I mean, personnel's the biggest issue and that's the largest part of the budget. Um, you know, moderate increase in that budget year over year. Um, you know, there was some increase primarily due to uh, an ARPA grant that was transferred to the operating budget because it was unfunded. Um, operating expenses went down slightly because um, there were adjustments to inflationary costs and, you know, adjustments to training, which more than offset increases to that budget. Capital outlay had a large increase percentage wise year over year. Um, that's 100% due to anticipated new patrol vehicles and year two of a three-year commitment to technology upgrades. I will note, though, when I was looking at previous fiscal years, the budget for patrol vehicles was usually not spent in full so that, you know, appropriated funds, they may not all be spent. Um, and part of that is due to a lack of the availability of new vehicles. Um, but again, the staffing issues are the most significant thing at the moment. Um, and for the police, that's exacerbated by a civil service requirement, um, which the chief indicated that maybe they're talking about, you know, possibly doing something about that. Um, they were able to get some lateral transfers last year, but that's a limited pool, obviously. Um, and increasing regulatory requirements, you know, complicate that staffing issue because there's required overtime, there's additional training that's needed, um, and that just makes it more difficult. Um, the inflation issue obviously hits them as well with fuel and uh, repair of vehicles. Um, and I just wanted to highlight the school resource officer program. I know previous reports have highlighted the community service officer program, but um, I thought it was apt to talk about SROs um, as three full-time officers in Barnstable, as well as part-time officers who go to the other schools. Um, and obviously it builds good relationship with students in the community. They're able to resolve issues internally quickly um, and obviously be a deterrent to any external threats. So I just wanted to highlight that program as well. Um, I don't I, I've scanned this, Chris. Does it say how many open positions the the police department has? Um, I did not put that in here. We certainly can add that, though. Do you know what the number is? I do not have it offhand. I don't think it's okay. as dire as DPW, but they yeah. certainly are short some positions. Yeah. Yeah, and just a note on on that matter. Um, it changes almost weekly. Yeah, um, with you know new people being hired, other people resigning or retiring. Um, so I don't know if it's necessary to put a yeah specific number in the report because it could be different two weeks from now. Yeah, um, I I think I have read that police departments around the country have, having, have, have had staffing shortages, not only due to difficulty of hiring qualified individuals, but, but uh, uh, a lot of retirements, higher than usual number of retirements. Chris, do you know if, if Barnstable has faced those, those uh, factors? Um, I don't know that they've seen an excess of retirements, um, but there mm -hmm. definitely is a shortage of applicants who are qualified. Yeah. yeah. Um, the chief did not mention uh, a disproportionate number of retirements when we met with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he That's didn't good. mention that that was an issue. It really was uh, on the applicant side that he thought yeah. there was an issue. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Wendy, any comments? I don't I don't have any comments. I although I would have to say that it would might be helpful to have a general number of the open positions, just even if we discuss it uh, out of the 
the context of the report. Well, what we could do if we do that is to say, as of a particular date, there are so many openings. I, I just think it's good to have a general idea, but but that's just my opinion. If, if you wanted to do that as of today, I believe it's 10 positions in the police department. Okay, that's helpful. Okay, that sounds like a plan. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at that and write something up. Okay. Moving on to enterprise funds, as you know, they generate their own income, uh, their own revenue from the fees that they charge. And um, they have they have remained fairly stable. And so their budgets are um, have basically uh, the revenue has met most of their expenses. And I have, uh, what I've done is to summarize each of the nine uh, funds. And the one that we spent the most time on was the water pollution control uh, in which we folded in the CWMP. And it's explained <clears throat> if you will roll down so that we can see what the what we've said about the CWMP um, to see if everybody understands it and it's clear enough. Yeah, there it is. Separately, it's mandated to protect <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. And um, <clears throat> the, I and I think there's a, there's a paragraph that says that it is being we have a transfer. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. There's a transfer right. funds of $3 million for the CWMP operating costs. And we all know where that those funds come from. It's the yeah, meal, well, hotels and all of that. Right. I think it'd be helpful to spell out for the reader what is the special revenue fund that that $3 million came from. Yeah, we could do that. Um, and then further up in that same paragraph, I, I wasn't quite clear on the, the second full sentence. This is the result of a million seventy five decrease in debt service as the long term financing for sewer construction projects have been converted to short term borrowings with only interest payments budgeted in fiscal 2024, I, I, why is it that only interest payments have been budgeted for fiscal 2024, Mark? The timing of the long-term financing lends itself so that a principal payment will not be due until fiscal year 2025. Um, the trust does not plan on um, converting our short-term financing that we have conducted through them um, to long-term financing until I believe November of 2023. So therefore our first principal payment will not be due until fiscal year 2025. So what is the tenor of those short-term borrowings? 0% loans through the um, state revolving loan fund. Right, but what's the tenor? I guess it, so you're saying short-term borrowings from a from a zero percent loan fund, but when I, I guess what I'm what I'm trying to understand is when is principal due on those short-term borrowings? Therefore, a year from the time they are converted to long-term borrowings. So we don't have any principal payment due on the short-term borrowing, only interest. And what is and what is the tenor of the short-term borrowings? A year. That it, until the trust decides to do a long-term borrowing, they have told us they think it might be this coming November. So we'll continue to finance our costs at 0% through the trust until they conduct their long-term borrowing. We have no control in the tenor of that. Okay, and, and which trust is that? I'm, I'm sorry. This is the State Revolving Loan Fund which okay. is managed by the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust. 
Right. Okay. So that revolving. Oh, so the revolving loan fund is is administered by by a clean water trust, which is the trust that you're referring to. Yes. Okay. State agency. All right. Sorry. That's a state agency. Yeah. So, Mark, when that converts to long term, is that when it bumps up to one point five percent, or yes. does it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Could some of those loans stay at zero percent if we move forward with our flow neutral issue? Yeah, if, if I don't think that that issue will be um, that mean that means that vote would have to take place, you know, before they do the long term borrowing. And I'm not sure even if it did whether they would consider this round of funding for a zero percent loan because they've already they're already building Committed. more financing projections and making assumptions on rates for participants through that fund. And we may not be eligible um, for 0% in this round. Okay, all right, thanks. So I guess my, my final comment is I, I would like to know what is that special revenue fund where the 3.1 million is coming from? I think the reader would probably yeah, like to know that so oh. yeah, that's our that's our sewer construction and private way maintenance and improvement special revenue fund okay so we'll put that in okay i can put that in yeah. any mm -hmm. other questions on this okay <clears throat> The fixed costs are the costs that we fund. actually, excuse me, Lillian. I wonder in the conclusions on page 19, yeah, where it says the enterprise funds continue to be financially stable and self supporting. I'm mm -hmm. wondering if that might need to include some of what Mark just talked about, about how um, the water pollution control is actually funded by other than self-supporting funds. Well, I we're, we point that out under the water pollution control section. Do you want that repeated under the conclusion as well? Well, I, I, is, is, it, it seems the conclusion is, is not consistent with what's in the water pollution control paragraph. So maybe you have two exceptions in that concluded conclusion section. So the what first, we could say first is sentence. with, well, you know, with, with the exception of the, water pollution control or the CWMP portion of the water pollution control enterprise fund. Most of the enterprise funds continue to, to be financially stable. Yeah, I think there's a trend that in addition to the youth and community center, now CWMP is not necessarily um, self-funding. Yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> you're new to this, but the enterprise fund, I mean, the airport fund had a uh, $18 million FAA um, operating, but um, came from the stimulus funds. So they were not totally self-sufficient for a number of years as well. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Maybe so, we should well, note think, that as well. I, I think, oh, I all think those, that's... All those, all those funds are gone now. What we now have is a discretionary FAA uh, money for one million dollars. Right. I, I, I think the eighteen million dollars is gone. I, I understand that. Um, I, I think that the idea that the enterprise funds are stable and self-supporting is just not true anymore. So I think what we should do, Chuck, is to start it with, uh, with the exception of. The CWMP portion of the water. Start start the sentence okay. with with the exception of yeah. That and the HYCC. 
Yes, comma. Ah, uh, where are we? Uh, HYCC. Yeah. Is that is that more accurate? I I'd say that that's that's more more accurate and factually sound. Yeah. Yeah, that's a better sentence. All right, and Lillian, and it, if you want to think about it, we can make more changes before the final. Right. Okay. Thank. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Chuck, can Any you go back up? Oh, yep. So can you go back up to the two tables for the enterprise funds? Yes, of course. Okay, so I was a little confused by what we have in the report here between funding and expense expenses on the next table because the funding equals the expenses. It's, it's really, they're the same numbers in both tables. They should be the same numbers in both tables. I didn't update the expense table. Um, I only updated the funding table to show what the funding total funding was for the enterprise funds next year. So I'm thinking maybe what the committee is trying to get at here on the funding side of things is do you want to really focus on the funding sources for each enterprise fund, whether that be charges for services, general fund subsidies, or use of their reserves? Because otherwise, they're the same numbers in both tables. They should be the same numbers in both tables the way it's currently. Right, right. Well, that I think that's an interesting perspective, Mark, and, and is probably more helpful than having two separate uh, graphics that have the same numbers in them. Well, the same numbers should... The numbers that I got, and then they were revised, so... We need to we need to retotal everything. Well, I'm one, hey. I'm one, I'm wondering if <clears throat> under the uh, individual descriptions of each fund, we should uh, delineate the funding sources to make it clearer. Yes, As that's it, what I was suggesting. Rather rather than rather than dumping it into the into the table. So why don't we do that? So you'd have a descriptive on the revenue sources. Yeah. Lillian, let me send you let me send you a table for, for your review. Okay. okay. Yeah. Because you sent one table and then it turned out to be readjusted. So <clears throat> I would appreciate your up to date Whoops. information as well as the sources of funding. Yes. And then what would we do with these two these two charts or tables? Would we get rid of them? No, just leave them. Make sure that they are they match each other. Right. Well, the, the, the one thing I want to point out though, and, and Mark can correct me, when Mark sent me his suggestions, the expenses table wasn't in there. And so the expense table that we're looking at now shouldn't match the uh, revenue table that Mark sent me because the expense table is from a prior version. Mark updated all those numbers. So right. don't get hung up on the numbers. To me, it was Mark, I thought was basically saying to Hector's point, if we're gonna have a table, you only need one table and we can get rid of this table that we're looking at right now on the page. The expense side. Well, don't, very... don't you think people need to know what the expenses are? Well, don't they match the funding? They're supposed well, to match. Well, maybe maybe we should just have one table that says revenue and expenses. I don't know. I mean, that, that's a sensible idea. I mean, it is if they're going to be different numbers. If they if they truly are going to be the same numbers, it seems unnecessary. They're not going to be the same numbers. Okay. 
the re the revenue is not going to be the same as the expenses because in some cases the expenses are less than the revenue and vice versa for others all right so we would just reformat right this. reformat and then so mark if you will send me uh, the revised numbers as well as the sources of funding for each of these i will insert those Thank you. Okay. So all of this is going to be revised somehow. Correct. <clears throat> right. I'm needing too many. There we go. Okay. Note. Thank you. Whoops. Okay. I think both tables are so um the prior tables. I think both the um the funding and expenses expense tables will be uh, revised and okay. Re recalculated. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh shall we move on to fixed costs? Uh, as you know, what we do is we uh, fund all the fixed costs before we uh, fund the municipal and school budgets. And so what I've done is to uh, provide the sources of revenue for the fixed costs. Yeah, you may just want to put that exact title there, Lillian, instead of just revenue as a uh, source of funding or source of funding. Revenue. Oh, okay. Let's source of funding. Right. That's true. Because the, the total says total funding. All right. So then we, then there's is the expenditures. <clears throat> and I think they actually match. And it shows what we, what, it shows the primary fixed costs. Yeah, this, this is actually an illustration of what I was talking about previously with the enterprise funds. We should do a similar like to see do a similar exercise where you show the expenditures for each enterprise fund and the source of funding for each enterprise fund. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I think that would make it clearer. Okay. <clears throat> what are we editing? Oh, I, I wasn't suggesting any edits here. No, the, the, that was that, oh, that was, that was for the enterprise funds. Got it. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so then I I talk about the uh, the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of new property growth from new development and how it's been uh, <clears throat> directed to the capital fund for the next five years. It should be in there somewhere. Yep. Okay. It's in there. Yep. In here. Yep. And so uh, we add the two and a half percent increase and the $750,000 to the capital trust fund. And this is very good because CFAC has um, supported an increase of the capital trust fund for years. So Um, just one comment um, in that bottom paragraph in the conclusion, the word mitigate in the last sentence, that doesn't seem like the, the right word. Would augment uh, or. Uh, Chuck, do you know what I'm what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. 
Bondishers would would supplement or something like that. Mitigate isn't the right word, I don't. Would possibly decrease the fixed cost debt service. Oops. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So now, any other comments or changes or suggestions? Thank you. All right. Looking ahead, um, <clears throat> so there is a final comment on CDMP. Th this basically was kind of some high level, big picture stuff. So it was um, a page on CWMP, uh, the aforementioned topic of staffing at 50,000 feet. Right. Can, you recall last year there was a comment that we really should have inflation uh, be prominently displayed in the report. We put it in, but it was towards the end. It felt um, odd to just ignore it this year if we put it in last year. So we tried to put a, you know, update comment in here. And then there was also a feeling that um, water kind of permeates this report. Uh, um, and so there should be a, a high level comment on water as well in the wrapping up section. And so that that's right. that's why the five sections that are here are here. Okay, L looks like it makes sense. Um, in the first section, the CWMP section, the second sentence, forecasting costs over the life, blah, blah, blah. I think you, you need a modifier like a forecasting accurately or accurately forecasting costs over the life. Okay. I would add that word maybe. And the Well, the I think cost that, I actually think that's redundant. Because when you when you put together a forecast, you have put you have considered all of all of the factors that are involved with the costs. And so it is going to be as accurate as the professionals have have uh, calculated it to be. So I think accurately forecasting is redundant. Okay, well, I, I, I take a different point of view. Forecasting, the point of this sentence is, it's hard to know and project costs over any 30 year period for almost anything. Um, so I, I, I think it's important. Well, to... I, well you know, the, the point of the, 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 the sentence actually says the forecasting is basically impossible. Right. So. Okay. All right. I think, uh, I, I think that, I think that accurately um, is probably not necessary. Okay. Um, and the, the, the two sentences down, the cost of CWMP over the five year uh, period is expected to approach 300 million. Doesn't it exceed 300 million slightly, Mark? Or am I, am I mistaken? Capital costs. Yeah. That period are about two hundred ninety-three million. Yeah, I, I think. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I I, th I think um, this is a budget report, and I think we're mixing apples and oranges, at least from exactly. my perspective. Um, we're talking about capital expenditures. Mark uh, in January laid out what the debt service, which is the budgeting issue which was like $14 million a year by 2032, I believe it was. Um, somebody would have to check. But, but it's, not, it's not this big a number. I mean, they, uh, they have to, Mark's gonna have to find this money for the capital funding, but the, the operating budget impact is, is, 
an order of magnitude less. And I, I think maybe we should bring that up in terms of what's the operating budget impact going to be of a CWMP, especially given that we've said we'll, we'll be saying earlier that you know this is being funded from multiple sources in, and what's being funded is the annual um, debt service and operating costs. I, I don't know if anybody else has that, you know, kind of we're mixing apples and oranges in this. No, I, I don't think that we are. I think this, this is this is a operating budget report. And we we're only we're only addressing the operating budget. You know, capital capital is another another, another budget altogether. So what we get need to do is to get a handle on the operating costs of CWMP for the next five years, if there, if there is a projection. Well, yeah, I've been looking at this, and I believe it's uh, the CWMP personnel runs about four, a little it's less about than three million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, and then the debt service in you know increases over time as Mark has laid out as as more money is borrowed, but I think that uh, you know in the time frame of five years gets up to about and Mark, please correct me if I'm got this wrong, but it gets up to about fourteen million dollars a year that needs to be funded in one way or another in terms of debt service. Is that about right? It sounds about right, Neil. Um, if you go back and look at the presentation I provided to the town council, I believe it was at the end of January. Yes. I laid out what the operating budget projections were for the CWMP that included staffing, other operating costs, and debt service. And I think in like seven or eight years down the road, it's almost 14 or $15 million a year in operating budget impact. Yes. And and I think that might be, you know, not, not to underplay how much uh, capital is going to go into this thing, but from an operating budget point of view, I'm just thinking that, uh, you know, apples and apples to all the stuff we've been presenting on the operating budgets earlier, we ought to just keep this in uh, uh, in the same metrics. Just a thought. Well, I think that's correct. So if it's about $14 million a year, then the five-year projection would be about, what, $20 million? No, uh, $70 million? Instead of 300? Does that sound right? Yeah, and I and I think that that's probably about right. But but we could actually put a table in there year by year, uh, with a five year plan of in terms of operating personnel uh, costs and uh, debt service, which I think is the two major components. I mean, it, it comes out to being you know just a little bit more than police, but no. but not mostly personnel. I'll send you, I can send you all my last presentation to the council, which is actually April 6th, ah, 2023. It's on the website, but I'll send the presentation to all of you. And there is a slide, slide 14, that shows what the operating budget impact over the next 10 years is, what it's projected to be. And it's broken down between project management, debt service, and cash funded projects. Okay, I have a question here because we're really, this is a section that's called looking ahead. And it, it essentially is a summary of the major components that we have been looking at. If we're going to go into the details of the CWMP funding for the next five years, should we in fact incorporate it back into the, um, Enterprise fund section. It's just a question, because I don't I don't think we should get too technical in this in the summary section. I I I think that makes a lot of sense, Lillian. What makes sense? Your your idea of uh, 
putting the operating budget. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that would, front. It, make, it makes more sense to me because you know we're talking about CWMP and its operating budget, and I think if we do that, um, we should put that we should put that under our enterprise fund. You're, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I think this real the summary really should be exactly what it says. Yes. Yep. The staffing looks the so CWMP basically looks good. The staffing looks fine. Um, are we still worried about whether we should put? Include the inflation portion. Yeah, I, um, I I defer to the collective will of the group. I toned down the wording and tried to make it, you know, accurate and correct as of you know early May of 2024. But whether it needs to be in here is a different topic. Well, maybe. Maybe we could maybe we could delete the first sentence and start with the second sentence. My vote would be to to talk about inflation at whatever level of detail, uh, Lily, and I'm fine with deleting that first sentence. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I'm I'm just responding to to Chuck's uh, reservations about it. Chuck, why? What are you? What's your hesitation about this section? Oh, I, I don't have a hesitation about the section as much as um, if, if we had put it this way, if we hadn't uh, gone out of our way to include it last year, um, yeah, I would not have included anything on it this year. But it felt like because we went out of our way last year to say this could be disastrous for at least one more year, it felt to me like we should have yeah. a comment in here if for no other reason to, than to bring it to a close. Yeah. Um, one suggestion, I think this is really about inflation and interest rates, higher interest rates. And those are two separate phenomena. Maybe you want, want to put inflation and, and interest rates in, as a little subhead there. Oh, up here? Yeah, where it says inflation in bold, yeah. Inflation and interest rates. Okay. Yeah, I, th then, I think. Yeah, I think. I think if we get rid of the first sentence, um, because because it, the relevance is the contracts and our ability to hire new personnel for the town. Yep. That impact is pretty great. Yep. Agree. Yeah. All right, I will do that. I will go from cross out to gone. Doink. Yeah. Wow. That's that's sufficient, I think. Anybody else want to weigh in on this? Okay. Whoops. Heavy thumbs. There's the kind of closing comment on water and then the thank yous to Mark and to the uh, three individuals that spent uh, a lot of time in support of the, the great work that Neil did um, on the school department. Yeah, I think that's a nice addition to, to call out, do a shout out for people who help us with this report over and above Mark. And okay. that's the report. That is the report. Good job. <clears throat> so Chuck, I if I, I'm gonna read through it carefully probably tomorrow. And if I have any other nits and nats, I'll just pass them your way. Chances yes. are I won't, but if I do, I'll send them along. That'd be great. If you can just I don't care how you do it, just make sure I can find the things you have nits and nats about. Yeah, what you could do if if Hector or Wendy has any comments to 
include in the in the text. <clears throat> what you could do is to insert them in a different color. Right. And then uh -huh. we and then we can look at it um, okay. next time. Okay. That sounds okay. good. Yeah. Is 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 your subcommittee planning another meeting next week or this week? Uh, we had not planned on another meeting because okay. I think we felt this was substantively done with some of the tweaks we've made. Okay. So sure there okay. was a need for another standalone meeting. Okay. So what you will get at our next meeting are all of the all of the changes that we have um, discussed tonight, and um, Mark and his team will look look at our figures and make sure they're accurate. And so hopefully uh, we, it will be the last consideration and approval of this particular report. Right. Okay. Um, one request, um, if you're gonna circulate sort of a quote unquote final draft, if you could circulate it to, to me anyway, a day or two in advance of the, of the next CFAC meeting rather than the day of, that would help be helpful. Yep, absolutely. That was that was my bad. I thought that was happening and it didn't. Okay. So you'll you'll have uh, more notice next time, promise. Okay. But I think it's good. And I like I like the table of contents. And uh, I think it's a good it's good work. <clears throat> Thank you all. All righty. Mark, how do okay. I unshare? <laughs> okay. I just did. I don't even know what I'm doing, and I did it. Thank you, Mark. All right, I moving on. Then. <laughs> moving on then to Chuck, our. Chuck, you have a future. I really don't, Hector, but thank he, you. He he doesn't really want to have that, but that's okay. He's done a great job. Um, our next item is an overview of the operating budget, and Mark's gonna tell us about it. Thank you, Lillian. So. Um, we have put the proposed operating budget up on the town's website. It's under the finance area. You can go to the um, operating budgets or budget reports and it's, it's there. Um, I just emailed you all the link earlier this evening as we were meeting here. Um, so that'll take you directly to the entire book. Um, it's it's over 500 pages long, and I would suggest that um, probably the best place to review it would be to begin with the town manager's budget message, because that summer, that just provides a summary of what's in the budget. Um, and so I would, I think that's the place to start. Um, and if I could just, I'll just share my screen here with all of you and highlight some of the components in section of the budget. Can everybody see this okay? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, starting with the fiscal year 2024 proposed operating budgets. Um, these are the revenue sources for the general fund portion of the budget. This is all regurgitation basically of what's in your budget report. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through all of this. You're all very familiar with it. Um, but these are, this is what makes up the $196 million of revenue sources to fund our general fund operating budget in fiscal year um, 2024. Property taxes, of course, are um, what's, what's built into the property tax increase is a uh, proposition two and a half um, percentage increase plus $750,000 estimate for new property tax growth. That gives us, plus the debt exclusions, any change in the debt exclusion and the Cape Cod Commission assessment. That gives us the $4,554,000 increase in the, in the projected property tax levy, which is about 3.2% more um, than the previous year. Um, also available from, the, from property taxes is we're reducing the amount that we set aside for abatements and exemptions in 23, we set aside $2.1 million for vacants and exemptions. We feel we can get away with a much lower reserve for vacants and exemptions in 2024, uh, based on just what we've issued for vacants and exemptions in 2023. 
Um, so that frees up another $837,000 of property taxes that can be redirected to the operating, other operating areas of the budget because we don't have to set it aside for potential abatements and exemptions. And of course, uh, a healthy increase in excise taxes, most of, most of that being more vehicle excise taxes, we continue to see strong collections and billings in that area. State aid, which is that big chunk of that increase is chapter 70. Well, it's all chapter 70, really. Um, even though the chapter 70 is going up 6 million, as you noted in your report, but overall state aid is only going up 5.4 million because we are seeing some reductions in other areas of aid, in particular aid that we receive to help to support charter schools. Um, and the other important component here is general fund reserves. We're significantly reducing the amount of general fund reserves that we're using to balance the operating budget. We're only using $250,000 of reserves, and that's basically to cover the town council's reserve fund, which, by the way, we haven't even used this year. Um, and it's only for extraordinary and unforeseen events. Um, but we always we, we put that into the budget a few years ago. It provides us a funding source for some short term funding of the things that may have gone that we may incur that uh, were unanticipated. Question, Neil? Yes, sir. Um, I just noticed a conflict on page five of the CFAC report. The approved fiscal year 2023 total of 184.3 is a little bit different than the 184.7. And the 6.6 percent .6 is not equal to 6.4 that is in the CFAC report. So, Chuck, you may need to update those numbers. Okay. Yep, that's one of the final checks that we'll go through. Um, oh, okay. Chuck. Yep. So, um, yeah. So that that's that's the general fund revenue side of things. Um, the operating or the fixed cost category here. Um, Again, this is in your report. We'll double check the numbers to make sure they're consistent with what's in your report. If you look at the transfer to the capital trust fund and a debt service, the amount that we budget for those two lines is essentially our capital program, right? It's, it's the amount of debt service we pay on an annual basis to, for the bonds that we've issued to, to conduct our capital program. And then we also transfer money to the capital trust fund for future um mm. borrowing commitments that in cash and cash appropriations for cap for the capital program collectively if that's a 15 million dollar budget when you look at those two lines um and collectively that's going up three million dollars 2.6 million for the transfer to the trust fund four hundred fifty thousand for debt service that three million dollars is 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 made up of a couple of things we we increased the base contribution, as you state in your report, by two and a half percent from what we funded the previous year. Plus, we add another 750 from new property growth. We're dedicating that to the capital program. And in this proposed budget, we're adding another $2 million to the transfer to the capital trust fund to in further enhance the funding for the capital program, because we have a very large capital program. Um, and so that's why it's up going up $3 million this year, collectively between those two accounts. The employee benefits are going up almost $2 million. Most of that is our pension assessment. I think it's over a million one increase. The rest is health insurance predominantly. Um, our school assessments are down slightly. Um, and then one big change here is provision for snow and ice removal. We didn't have a snow and ice removal deficit this year, obviously. It's a very mild winter. Um, that's one area where we are allowed to deficit spend by state law, and we did not. We only, we're actually, out of a $975,000 budget, I think we spent um, $575,000 of that. So we're going to be returning about $400,000 in unexpected appropriations in that budget this year. Um, going into the general fund operating budgets, again, this is all baked into your report, you know, the 7.8%, $6 million increase in school operations and so forth. Um, we actually have a couple of departments going down, community services department um, and the town council. Um, included in these budgets are a few new positions. 
under the town manager's budget. We do have, and this is all laid out in the in the budget document when you review it. Um, we have a couple of new positions in the town manager's office, one being a diversity, equity, and inclusion officer or director. Um, that's a new position and an assistant safety officer. Um, the DEI position is partially offset by a reduction of a part-time employee in the town council's office, which is why you see a reduction in the town council's operating budget. Uh, we also have in the administrative services department an additional town attorney position proposed um, because of the additional legal work that we're um, dealing with um, and the anticipated growth in that as we build out this public sewer system legal spending a lot more time on property related issues uh, whether it's easement taking um, or other title research types of issues um, so there is a proposal to add another position that is partially offset by the elimination of a part-time position in the legal department as well as a proposed reduction in outside legal counsel um, budget within the comprehensive wastewater management plans operating budget. Um, <clears throat> and I think somebody mentioned earlier this evening that um, we are transferring, I think Chris in his report makes mention of this, we are transferring the funding of some positions that are currently paid for out of our ARPA grant to the general fund operating budget. That includes four positions, four police officers, as well as a grant coordinator in planning and development and an IT specialist position within the administrative services department. We're paying for those six positions currently out of the operating budget, I mean, out of the ARPA grant. We're transitioning all of those off grant funding and putting them into the general fund operating budget for fiscal year 24 so that we can continue to maintain those positions in the later years as they are needed. And it gets them off this one time funding source, which will eventually run out. Those are the major changes. Of course, the, the, uh, the lot of changes in the school department budget, which are all highlighted in your um, in your report. Um, so I think by, that's really all I wanted to say on these uh, tonight is that the, the budget report is available on the website. You can go and take a look at it. We do have the enterprise funds, of course, in here as well. Um, selectively, they're actually going down 825,000. The big, the big change there is the airport. They're selling less jet fuel. It's costing less to acquire it. They don't need as much of a budget um, to buy jet fuel next year as they did in FY23. Um, so that's why you see a big reduction in their operating budget. Um, but again, all all self-supporting with the exception of those two that you all talked about this evening, the Highness Youth and Community Center, they receive a significant subsidy. And now the Sewer Enterprise Fund, and more specifically the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan, as that is not funded through user rates or charges charged by the enterprise operation, it has a separate funding source. Um, so you can look at that as similar to being a subsidy for that enterprise fund operation. Um, but it's kind of unique because it's specifically associated with this large capital program that's taking place there. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to highlight the fact that it's there on the town's website. Um, take a look at it. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions on it. I think you captured the significant changes already in your report uh, that will be going to the town council. And um, thank you all for um, putting that effort that you did into it this year. I think it's probably one of the best reports that I've seen um, that we've put together from this committee. Um, and it's a lot of work, especially a lot of new members on this committee. You guys have had to really dive into this and trial by fire. And um, I know it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very large and voluminous uh, budget and a lot of pieces to it and municipal finance is like another language um, for some, including myself sometimes. So, but thank you for your efforts. And please contact me with any questions that you have as you go through that. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, yeah, I, I will, I'd like to also um, 
comment on our new members. They did a stellar job on their on their respective drafts. Um, it wasn't easy. They just jumped right in there and did a good, very, 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 very good job. All right. Um, does anybody have any other comments? Our next meeting will be the 22nd, and we will be reviewing, hopefully, the final the final version of our operating budget draft. That's great. And what else is upcoming for this committee? Um, I think we can we should probably move right into the uh, the start drafting the twelve page budget summary document that that you do every year if you want to continue doing that i think it's been yes. uh, a, a good exercise every year um that the, as well as the the annual report you mean yeah you know that that, that the, where you you take the town's budget and you break it down into like 12 pages and right um, you've been doing that for about seven years now right and we issue that sometime in august or september usually yeah right, right. I think that's I, I would be in favor of doing that again. I don't know how yeah, other people well, feel. it takes it takes a while for us to look at it and to discuss it and to put it together. So I think that's we can't we can't begin too soon. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else? Who who is the customer for the twelve page summary? General public. Public. So we usually um, circulate them, Neil. Um, most of us take a stack of them and put them in places near where we live, libraries, churches, uh, you know, I put them in the group in Katu, um, and I, I check on them and they actually get picked up. So people actually read them, I think. Other places to drop them off, Neil, include the post office. Yeah. Um, and in Osseril, I drop them off at, um, uh, you know, five or 10 copies at each of the many real estate offices ah. uh, to be to be shown to people who are considering purchasing a place in town. It's a very it's a very popular document, um, Neil. Um, they disappear overnight. People, <laughs> people, people, people are really interested in what is happening. We're actually thinking of charge, charging for it now. So I was going to say, free free sells well. <laughs> of course, we don't know what happens to them. I presume. We, well, we know people buy. We know people pick it up. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think we circulated over three hundred last year. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Not hearing any new business. Is there a um, motion to adjourn? I move. Second. I'll second it. All right. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. Uh, All right. We're, I'm look. I'm looking for Chuck. Oh, there you are. Here. Yep. Chuck. William. Yes. Neil. Yes. Hector. Yes. Wendy. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I think uh, on German. Wendy, Wendy's there, but it's her. She's muted. Chris. Yes. And Chuck is a yes. So we have enough votes to adjourn. Thank you very much. And.